It's almost a requirement living on the South Coast, a preoccupation bordering on an obsession with the price of real estate. On the Lower Mainland, prices have pushed beyond any reasonable boundary. After all, an average single-family home in Vancouver is more expensive than anywhere else in the country, and other communities aren't far behind. But why? What are the market forces at work? Many blame Asian buyers for pushing everyone else out. But as Jazz Johal reports, there are many other factors at work. In a Richmond hangar, two helicopters are rolled out to the tarmac. Today, they'll be taken on a special flight with passengers from China. They're flying to see a home 30 kilometers outside of Victoria. They're the guests of Cam Good. His firm, Key Marketing, sells homes with an emphasis on Asian buyers. 60% of his business caters to Asia's newly rich. This year, he expects to conduct over 100 similar tours, with most of his buyers coming from China. All are interested in buying real estate in B.C. They'll be looking at a home with an asking price of $14 million. It's won numerous design and environmental awards. The buyers are looking for a weekend place, as they already own property on the west side of Vancouver. So uh, just under 68 acres, and there's about 1,400 feet of oceanfront, low bank. Yeah. Yeah. The home is being sold on the private listing service, or PLS.ca. It allows British Columbians the opportunity to discreetly sell their homes to Asian buyers without a for sale sign on the property. These Asian buyers have allowed us to film their trip, but don't wish to speak on camera. You know, one of them's north of a billion, um, and a couple others are in the several hundreds of millions in this example. Um, but uh, beyond that, you know, their names and who they are and what they do and whatnot, it's, uh, it's, def it's best kept private. There are over a million millionaires now in China, second only to the United States. It's a number that continues to grow every single day, and the aspirations of the Chinese middle class are only now starting to be felt when it comes to BC real estate. And remind me, the other thing I should try and do is get the penthouse on to pls.ca. Back in Vancouver, you can see an entire industry catering to that growing niche. Key marketing has been focusing on China for the past two years and is starting to pay off with strong interest from buyers who prefer certain pockets in the city. Chinese are buying Vancouver, both west and east side, west Vancouver, uh, Richmond and Coquitlam. Stories abound in our city of Asians snapping up homes and pricing Vancouverites out of the market. Agents are even known to leave flyers at the door promising to sell property in China directly. Sandy Garasino doesn't like it and is concerned over long-term affordability in the city. It's not a question of what is the uh, dollar value of that real estate, that housing. The question is how does it relate to the local economy? And that's where, you know, we don't have world-class incomes here. Even in this financial crisis, China's rich are doing well. The Chinese government, concerned over rampant property speculation, has made second and third mortgages more difficult to acquire. Hence, buyers like Ma Ying are looking towards Canada. Vancouver is relatively cheaper than big cities in China. It's well worth it. Toronto is even cheaper than Vancouver. In the past few years, Vancouver real estate has provided stellar returns much better than the stock market. This interest, some have argued, has led to a market not grounded in reality and forced residents out of the city core. Maybe you have to live in the suburbs. So what? A lot of people do. The vast majority of Vancouverites live in the suburbs. That's, What's wrong with that? That's exactly the problem. When people can't live close in the city, then our best and our brightest pick up stakes and they leave. And that's exactly the problem, is that we are, it's not about them. It's about our future as an economy. Developers keep building and people keep buying. In many ways, Asians have become the new boogeyman of Vancouver home buyers. Locals have even suggested implementing ownership restrictions similar to Australia, where foreigners are restricted from buying existing housing stock and new properties can't be marketed exclusively overseas. Economist Helmut Pastrick says it would be a mistake since Asians aren't responsible for the higher prices region-wide. Given that it's a relatively small component of the market, it affects only certain sub-markets so to any degree 
uh, and that really the fundamental causes are uh, that we're in a growing region uh, in a land constrained area uh, which is driving up prices rather than foreign ownership. The government and the real estate industry just don't keep records on foreign ownership in the residential market. Sam Sullivan says he's seen studies that show Chinese investors have purchased less than 1,000 homes in the entire region. Small numbers, he says. The real culprit, he insists, is the city, which hasn't pushed enough development. Since the 1970s, we've been growing like crazy and yet not allowing uh, density to happen or across the city. And uh, the West End was downzoned. Uh, the, a lot of the higher density areas were downzoned in the 70s and we haven't allowed the housing to be built. Developers are begging to build more housing, which would get the high price of housing down, and uh, that's not allowed by the city. Susie Jo Duner is concerned for her city. She feels Canada's lax ownership rules have made it too easy to use Vancouver real estate as a vehicle for investment and is now contributing to inflated prices. The UBC graduate has seen too many of her friends flee the Lower Mainland because of cheaper housing and better jobs elsewhere in Canada. As great as it is that we have, you know, very vibrant and great city, if we don't have people that are going to contribute to the city, just for the long term, the vibrancy of the city, is, we're hollowing it out like a you know, double-edged sword. We're keeping our prices high, which is great, but our city's hollowing out from the people who can actually contribute. The debate on whether to curb foreign real estate buying in Vancouver will probably continue. What isn't in question is the rise of China's millionaires. More are created every day, with many wanting to invest in Canada.